Hi everyone and welcome to Letterbox Book Club. I'm Mackenzie. And I'm Claire. And today we are going to be talking about The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. Um, quick disclaimer, um, we're very much a white Australian, so some of our pronunciations of names are going to be horrid. And we are very sorry, we have tried our hardest to enunciate and pronounce them correctly, but we some of them we just can't get, and we're very sorry. I would also, actually no, I'll get into that in a minute, but yeah. <laughs> I just want to quickly say uh, we just spent a good 10 minutes trying to phonetically <laughs> type it out so we can have something to refer back to. Yes. But yeah, we're going to butcher it. Sorry. Before we even begin, I just want to say I never had like a, like a deep mythology phase. Like none of this really rings a bell to me. And Yes, I was about to say that. Let's just go into it real quick. Okay, so let's start off. Let's We're going to thoughts, feelings, emotions, because I feel like this fits into thoughts, feelings, emotions. So do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? Uh, you can go first. Okay, so um, as Claire was just saying, I don't know how we're going to um, clip this together, but I never yeah, had like a deep mythology stage. I don't think I was ever taught about this at school or anything. So the only one, the only person in this who's really familiar to me is like Achilles, because everyone knows Achilles. And Helen, I guess, because I've heard that kind of before in, like, Troy and stuff, the movie. <laughs> um, and there was, like, an ABC show where they were, like, descendants of the heroes and they all kind of had, like, similar names. But they weren't. Anyway, so, yeah. So a lot of this is very unfamiliar to me. So now I know the story of Achilles, which is great. If it is the stories of Achilles, I haven't done any fact-checking, but I'm sure it is close to what happened. But yeah, so we're very sorry, but it's a good book. <laughs> yeah, same here. Like, I wish I had a deep myth, not even just Greek mythology, but just, yeah, mythology phase in general. The only real, like, mythology I really got into was when, like, Percy Jackson, the movie, came out. Like, yeah. I haven't read the books. I really wanted to read the books. I just haven't gotten around to it. And Hades Town is my <laughs> mythology. <Yeah. laughs> I saw um, Orpheus's name because he plays the liar and, and Achilles talks about playing the liar and yeah. stuff. And so I was like, I know something. I know the liar. <laughs> but yeah, so this whole thing was new to me. I wasn't even sure if it was going full like, this is going to sound stupid from me, but like fantasy genre-ish because like I wasn't expecting like a centaur to show up. I thought they yeah. say gods as in like just being blessed, like something that they believe in. Yeah, and I didn't see it, yeah, exactly, as, like, the gods, like, physically kind of, like, being involved in the war and being like, oh, I'll go ask Zeus to, like, make sure that the Greeks win or whatever. And I was like, yeah. oh. Yeah, I wasn't sure how far they were taking with the whole actual physical gods being there until, yeah, Achilles' mother constantly was jumping in and out of the water. I was like, yeah. oh, okay, so this is where it's actually going. But then yeah. again, that's because we're, yeah, extremely white Australian non-mythological people out here. Yes. I enjoyed it nonetheless. But now it was a lovely story. Uh, I feel like back half, like once we get into the nitty gritty of the war, and of course we'll get into it, it's where I was like glued to my book for the most part. The whole I last, the last am going part. to be completely honest. This is a book that like I don't think I'll read again. <laughs> yeah, like I'm one and done. Yeah, like I'm one and done. I'm glad I did it. Good to ease into. Um, to be honest, I don't think I'd pick this one up again. I'd probably recommend it to people, but like it's a lot. It is so much information, and I know we say that a lot about other books. It's like I guess like other books, like when we're reading, like with a lot of information, it's like fantasy and it's building these whole new worlds and stuff. And this is a lot of information about like Greek history and that I don't really understand. And I'm sure I would love one day to know a lot about it. This was a struggle straight book for me. I still yeah. enjoyed it, but yeah. Yeah, kind of same. I was a little bit thrown off with the pacing because it was, it, like, in a way it was also good because it was very concise. Like, they got to the point of each situation. Very yeah. well structured. But yeah, just as you said, like, based on, like, ancient history, it's like, I'm not, it's a bit slow for me. But yeah. But yeah, the last, the actual, yeah, I think moments within the war, like the back probably 100 pages or so. Yeah. Uh, was uh, My eyes were glued. I just wanted to finish it. So, yeah. But that was me. And also, just quickly, before we drag into the blurb, happy Pride Month, everybody. Yes. Not to say that we should only celebrate Pride during an arbitrary month, but... But it's good that this is how um, the big corporations acknowledge Pride. <laughs> well, it... We are the biggest of corporations out here. <laughs> 
No, I'm saying like I, I understand. Yeah, I understand. the month of June is when the whole world doesn't acknowledges Pride, not just those who are members of the Alphabet Mafia. In which you should be able to celebrate every single day, and yes. we we'll salute you. But yes, we have a good little lineup of books this Pride month, so please stay tuned and keep an ear out for them. Alrighty, Kenzie, when you're ready, please dip into the blurb. I will. I'm just drawing a picture. <laughs> nice. What, what picture? <laughs> I'm drawing the um, bow string on the front. That's a heart. Oh, cute. Okay. Hang on. I'm wearing a bodysuit and it's in my vagina. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, Greece in the Age of Heroes, awkward young prince Patroclus has been exiled to the court of King Peleus. Despite their differences, Peleus's golden boy Achilles befriends the shamed prince. As they grow into young men, their bond blossoms into something deeper despite the displeasure of Achilles' mother, the sea goddess Thetis. But when word comes that Helen of Sparta has been kidnapped, Achilles must go to war in distant Troy and fulfil his destiny. Torn between love and fear for his friend, Patroclus goes with him. I'm going to struggle every time because I want to say Patroclus. <laughs> Patroclus. 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 Easy peasy. A little get off my chest moment. I was actually quite annoyed that we didn't Sorry. get the resol- no, it's all right. I was annoyed that we didn't get the resolution of Helen potentially being saved or what yes, happened. It yes. was just- it was just dead. like dead, dead yeah. yeah. Um, I just on my transcript of my audio, um, Patroclus autocorrects to Patrick Lewis. <laughs> hey, that's kind of a good way to kind of. Or Patroclus, like I have Patrick, but he is gone. I am Patroclus. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's a good phonetic, uh, phonetic way to say it. Yeah, Patroclus. Yeah, Patroclus. 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 Anyway, we digress. This is going to be fun. Like, I was trying to, yeah, hinder my little bit of laughter with you pronouncing before, yeah. just because I, I knew you thought it was funny the way you wanted to say it. Yeah, I stumbled. Um, these are my notes, so I got some little notes going on. I will be honest, like, this, yeah, like, this was a struggle for me, so I'm not as invested in this book, and I'm sorry to all our, our listeners that I won't be as invested in this one, but I tried my best, and I did enjoy parts of it. Honestly, same. I finished it last night. I'm just kind of low-key exhausted yeah. <laughs> from the weekend that I've had, so like, I may sound also not disinterested, but a bit uh, tired. So. Yes. Oh, but again, overall, it's a, it's a lovely story. We loved it. Yes. Alrighty. Where do you want to start, Kenzie? So, even though it's called A Song of Achilles, it is told from the perspective of Patroclus. Yes. And about, like, his life. Yeah, a young prince ushered into exile from killing a young boy. Yes, his father is disappointed in him because he is mediocre. <laughs> and <laughs> so daddy issues right off the bat. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, he's not man enough, and, yeah, the father would always comment on how his mother was like simple and all that type of yeah. stuff which is quite rude but like it's probably what they were like during the time and i feel like growing up he would be a bit of a pushover even despite being a prince and which is the which is why the kid tried to take what, it, what was it dice from him yes. and then he just like pushed him in self-defense and inadvertently and accidentally killed, killed him, him. Killed yes. him. So, yes thus leads to his exile and then he goes to stay at achilles's place Yes, how did you pronounce where he was exiled to? Because it's just like Puria or something, isn't it? I kept wanting to say like Prithian. <laughs> yeah, uh, P-H-T-H-I-A. I don't, I'm scared. How did you say it before? What did you P say? Puria. Puria. Or oh, isn't that not Achilles' son? That would be Puria, because that was P-Y-R-A-H. No, that's Purihus. Purihus. Yeah. Um, I'm just I'm just gonna happily modernize it and just say Achilles' place, <laughs> his his, his city, his town, his area. Uh, due to the exile, uh, King Tyndarus mm -hmm. humbly like accepted him as part of their household, essentially. And Achilles straight away, well, it took a bit of time, but eventually comes around to Patroclus becoming his companion, mm -hmm. which gives like benefits, like status, mm. and somewhat respect. Which is pretty cool. Well, at least that part of the story, Patroclus is, you know, obviously crushing heavily on Achilles. I mean, who wouldn't though? <laughs> yeah. Achilles is described to being the most, <laughs> the most beautiful man you have ever seen. Yes, and then he becomes his therapon, which is like a person, like your most trusted advisor, whether sworn, blood sworn, and sworn in love. And I thought also this was very um, reminiscent of like Parabatai. Like shadow hunters and shadow stuff. hunters yeah yeah like it's a bond beyond like souls souls yeah love and all that type of stuff yeah especially in this kind of myth mythological yes setting i don't want to say world because people 
because it is believed to be real. You know? I know, but like so it's it hard. is, it's got to be mythology. Like I don't know, based on the mythology. Yeah, yeah. I'd say yeah, a, a bond. Yeah, above all else, I guess. Yes, as well. Also, just quickly, uh, in the beginning, uh, Patrick Lass's father was trying to wet him off. Yes. Young, and obviously that came to some contention. One of the other guys, look, I'm not even going to be interested in what any of the other characters say. <laughs> oh, names, yeah, I can't, I can't do it. <laughs> but, one, but one dude was like, let the woman choose, and it was such a big deal. It was like, yeah, how dare she, but she yeah. ended up choosing. And then they all swore an oath not to, like, kill each yeah, other. That to, or yeah, that to, yeah, to, um... Other to honour that who she had chosen. And obviously that comes back and bites them in the ass later on. Yes, so. yes, it does. But I feel like, yeah, during that time, like, or that setting, like, oaths and stuff are taken incredibly seriously. So, yeah, what, like, kicks it off is what, there's Helen is kidnapped, and so Patroclus remembers, yes, yeah, this oath that they made to honour this, um, who Helen had chosen, so he knows that he's going to be, like, drafted into the war. Um, and he, he, is it, he, he runs away? Uh, no, Achilles Oh, there's a, yeah, and there's away. a prophecy. Yes, because it said that he, uh, Achilles will die. He'll be the greatest warrior, but he will also die in the war. Yeah, once Troy. Hector is killed. Obviously, well, before, I suppose before he is sent away, obviously Achilles and Patroclus have developing moments with mm-hmm. each other. No, hang on, <laughs> I'm getting the timeline completely It's after up. they're sent away. So, yeah. Hang on, hang on. Nah, yeah, yeah. They chill at his house for a bit. They become friends. He, they become companions, yeah. and then Achilles' father sends him to yes. the mountain with with yes. Chiron. 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 Yes. C H I. Chiron, the centaur. And this is when I was like, oh shit, they're actually doing creatures and centaurs. Like I thought they were just like omnipresent beings. Again, I'm a dumb white Australian <laughs> non-mythological person. I'm sorry. And so they, they begin their like training in the wilderness, and that's so cool. Very bold to trust the centaur to like train them. Yeah. Like, you can just yeah. Kill them both and call <laughs> yeah, them a day. I'm done. You know? <laughs> and obviously, this is where Achilles and Patroclaus's relationship kind of starts to blossom a bit. They have a bit of a smooch, which was cute, and then later on, because they're there for a few yeah. years, and you know they eventually make love and all that mm-hmm. type of stuff. They're sixteen at that point when they make love. Yes, and there will be times where Achilles goes and visits his mother because she is a sea nymph goddess, and because first it was only meant to be yeah Patroclus that went away, and she no Achilles that went away. Sorry, and she is pissed off that Patroclus went. Yes, because she hates him. He. I feel like she knows more of the prophecy that led on than she led on, because obviously with what we know at the end, like, it was his fault that Achilles had to kill Hector. To yeah. He is dead, so... I mean, to be fair, I would probably hold a grudge. You know, she's trying to do what she can to protect yeah. her son. But yeah, she absolutely despises Patroclus and his relentlessness in being with Achilles. Oh yeah, they're, they're, then there's the news of Helen being kidnapped, and they're gone back to Achilles' place and then he gets kind of uh, Thetis sends him away to Skyros. Yes. Skyros. Yes. And then there's like what nine, ten years of war. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look, actually let's just talk about Skyros yeah. real quick because it was like one night Patroclus wakes up and Achilles yes. is gone. He's obviously upset and because no one's going to tell him anything. Then he like, he makes a gesture towards the king, uh, well, Achilles' father. To like be super submissive it's like asking god a question yeah. essentially and so then he tells him where achilles is and he's in skyros skyros patroclus obviously takes the journey himself all the way over there to try and suss out what's going on he is met and also actually no his daughter meets him first princess did <laughs> i'm scared uh dear damia yeah damia damia to Damia. She gave me a real pi- <laughs> I know it's like mythological, but like she gave me real pick me vibes. <laughs> yes. Pick me. Choose Love me. Love me. Love me. And and then like she pr- they're known for their a lot of the ladies there are known for their dancing. So obviously at dinner they make a presentation. Like they she shows off her dances, all cool. And lo and behold, it is revealed Achilles is there disguised yes. as a lady. This part, it's like I had to read that read that part like a couple times because I was confused. A bit confused. Yeah. Yeah. Again, maybe it's just the pacing, or it's just me yeah. not really understanding the history. Yeah. And then was it dear Damia who was pissed because Achilles wasn't showing her attention? Ah, uh, yes. yeah. So I think she gave him a little ultimatum. It's like him or me yeah. type of thing, and he chose Patroclus, yeah. of course. And then she started getting real pissy, and then it's later revealed. 
that they were secretly married. Yes. <laughs> Again, because because I wasn't sh- yeah, because that, that's the whole thing I got confused about. Because they revealed they were married before revealed that he was disguised as a lady so i was a little yes. bit confused but then again could just yeah. be me and then and then because in polar like opposites of um so she's like achilles wife and she ends up having his son whatever but then the woman that they like capture like brie brie whatever her name is i'm just gonna let's just call yeah brie um is like happy with patroclus and she's like i'm happy to be your wife and you can keep achilles as your lover like it's chill. Yeah. Whereas, yeah, Dyer, I'm going to call it Dyer. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, fuck you. I feel like because Dyer's a princess and she needs someone of, like, Achilles' princely Yeah, but I feel like also even in mythology a lot as well, like, it's very common to have, like, your wife slash husband and then they all have lovers. Like, let's not get started on Zeus. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. But I think, yeah, it'd be easy for... Uh, Brie and Patroclus for that because yeah they don't have titles and well at least he doesn't have a title anymore and so like they could easily be like husband and wife live out the rest of the days of in normal in normal in some sort of normalcy whereas obviously Achilles would have be still led into the royal life and yes it is revealed that she is pregnant and Patroclus is upset which is fair enough but what was really sad that I found quite heartbreaking was that like Thetis set this set that hole up for Achilles to uh, uh for die to sleep yeah. with Achilles, which is gross and wrong and yeah ugh. yeah I didn't like that vibe yes. at all or that narrative but yes yeah, so that was heartbreaking and yeah Patroclus was upset rightly so not that Achilles had a choice yeah they pretty much Odysseus Odysseus, Odysseus? Odysseus, yeah, damn. I keep thinking it's Odysseus. <laughs> Odysseus, and so some time has passed. Odysseus comes looking for them. There was like a like a little incident where like everyone comes. I don't know. It was like a like a sig- an attack signal yeah. or something, or maybe a defense. And then Achilles reveals himself. There was a horn, like the trumpets or whatever, of war. And then like yeah, Achilles reveals himself. Yeah, and so they're like yeah, but then you. yeah, it was just a trick they- to get him to come out because they're like, we know that you're like blessed <laughs> by the gods. Yeah, and you're hiding from us. And yeah, then then they, then they bring his sorry ass back to his old his old place, and they start preparing mm. for war. Essentially. For the nine years of war. <laughs> Imagine trying to like, because he's trying to avoid this prophecy to live as long mm. as he can, and that must suck though. Just knowing you're you're going to die like yeah. soon, and so he says like, yeah, he tries to do everything that he can to like not harm Hector or like not do anything to Hector because he's done nothing to yes. me. So you know, let's just go straight to the war because we're going for flying through this. Yeah. I mean, it is very—it's a simple I, because book a lot of it history. is just like I'm hiding. Oh, you found me. Oh, here's two years of war. Here's another two years of war. Oh, then we're gonna go and do this, and then here's another like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then what? His son is enlisted as well when he's twelve. Yeah. I have opinions on that little fucking <laughs> So yeah, the war. Takes about ten years. Yeah. Like, ten years. Which is a fucking long yes. ass time. But again, Achilles is prolonging Yeah. And also like again because I know it's like mythology or whatever, and they're like, Oh, like, I'm gonna go to the gods and like ask for their favour or whatever and it's like, Can you not just ask them to end the war? Like at this point. <laughs> yeah. I suppose you remember like it's like the conversation we had about like destiny and all that like a yeah. while ago. It's like it's a set destiny. No matter what road you take, it's always, yeah. you're eventually gonna meet yeah. the mark. There's like a non-negotiable yeah points that like you will get to no matter which path you take. Yeah, and this is exactly what happens to him. Yes, <laughs> he is trying his best to hold yes. off, and his stubbornness, I guess, is what ultimately yeah. killed him. I must think it must be so exhausting, like appeasing every god, because yeah. Artemis needed needed to be appeased. Apollo yeah. needed to be appeased. It's like how exhausting. Yes. Uh, do you know who Apollo is? Because I don't really recognize like as a like, god. Yeah, like I've heard of Apollo. Yeah, and I've heard of Artemis. I know a lot of people name their cats. Yeah, Artemis, he's so the god of light what? and music. He favors the Trojans, especially Hector. Okay. Ooh. Artemis, as well, is a goddess of hunt. Yeah. Okay. The wilderness, wild animals, nature, vegetation, blah, yeah. blah, blah. Cool. See, we're learning something <laughs> today. I don't want to learn. <laughs> but, yep. Yeah, and, of course, as time goes on, discontent amongst the armies 
lays some unrest because Achilles isn't furthering his yes. prophecy. And of course, I think at this point, Apollo is displeased because he wants shit moved along because, again, as we just learnt. I'm also happy to get through um, the plot and then talk about like the themes and stuff because I have opinions. <laughs> okay, okay, all good. So Apollo was trying to push things along because, as we just learned, he favours yes. the Spartans, so he wants the Spartans yes. to win. And this leads to, like, a pretty nasty plague. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it plagues the, um, because first someone is like, we need, like, a hundred, like, sheep or whatever, but then they, yeah, their livestock is plagued. A hundred cows yeah. or something, and it wasn't, yeah, appeased. Um, and this is because after each raid, of course, uh, they get to take their treasure and their loot or their women. Mm. And obviously this is where they, how they acquired Brie. Yeah. And um, there was a young priestess that got taken that Achilles claimed. Or the king, uh, the guy. Oh, G Ag Agamemnon. Agamemnon. Dumamu. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Dumamu. <laughs> Dumamu. <laughs> And yeah, there was like a young priestess woman that he claimed, Backgammon. and her, f <laughs> and her father, uh, wanted her back, and this is what causes yes. the plague because the gods are displeased with that decision. Obviously, he is stubborn and doesn't want to give it up, and then obviously the plague starts affecting his armies, and people are dropping like flies, and then Achilles is like, "You will give her back. Give him a voice. Oh, give the father a voice." <laughs> Oh no, Kenzie. Oh. I'm just going to finish this off yeah, before I forget. Thing. And then pretty much Achilles comes across as dishonouring him because of... It's kind of like undermining his leadership. And then this is where it's like he's done something to harm Hector? Is that this part? No, no, Wait. no, no. And then Agamemnon... Mem whatever. <laughs> argue. I'm just going to call him Argue. <laughs> uh, argue was all like, well, you disrespected me, so now I'm going to... Ooh, actually, I don't remember what, what really happened. But then at some point, Brie gets involved mm. and, like, argument mom wants her. But then Achilles is like, no, because she is my, like, treasure or whatever. Like, I claim yeah. her. And then Achilles refuses to fight for them and becomes super stubborn. And then the sp and then they just keep losing because the gods... Uh, Thetis made a deal that the Spartans are just going to keep coming and they're just going to destroy uh, their armies. Yeah until at least Achilles participates again. And of course, this stubbornness leads to a lot of fights between Patroclus, because Patroclus wants to do right by Brie. Firstly, I love their little relationship. I yes. <laughs> I shipped him. I shipped him. But Achilles was blind, is being blindsided by fame, and and like he's very stubborn in terms of his honour and loyalty. And then Patroclus turns around and is like, well, is this what you want to be remembered for? Is this what you want to be famous yeah. for? And then obviously, what did you say? What part we're up to? Pro Something happens, I think they steal someone or whatever, or do something, and then that's how Achilles realises, oh, I've done this to harm Hector, so now I need to go into the war. Oh, no, no, before, like, he killed somebody. Yeah. Uh, I think, yeah, it was a raid, and I think they killed, yeah, they killed somebody close to Hector. I don't know if it was, like, a lesser brother or something. Yeah. I don't think so. He was like, oh, now Hector has reason to hate me yeah Achilles is stubborn stubborn not wanting to fight not wanting to fight because argue is like I will not rest until you apologize it's the battle of the biggest yes. dick yeah. in this moment like they're, they're both peacocking yeah. and so Patroclus was like because they're just getting belted and they're so close to their little encampment the Spartans yeah. are now and so they're like they've never been this close before they're gonna eventually siege so Patroclus is like you know what let's lift up some morale I'll be disguised as you run along like my goal is to just be to just for theatrics like to not do anything to not fight of course I think a bit of the glory gets a bit to his head so he starts throwing spears, Patroclus does, he kills a couple of Hector's yep. brothers, which is impressive, considering he became essentially a hero yeah. <laughs> throughout this entire time. He was like yeah. a doctor. And obviously Achilles is back to where it he is. It says like, like, well, like he threw from like an impossible distance or whatever. So he's a bit skilled. Or I'm thinking that the gods had something to do with it because they're like, we've got to get this moving along. Yeah, ooh, I never thought of it like that. I just thought he just, like, dumb Nah, because I think, like, it's lose. prophecy. Like, prophecy has to come true. And so they're like, it's been nine years, like, we're waiting. Like, you give this you guy some, die. Some, some glory. And obviously, after killing a couple of the brothers, uh, Patroclus gets, like, knocked off from his chariot, and it is revealed. And then Hector comes up and kills him, essentially. And obviously, Achilles is in a great grief. Yeah, I wasn't sure how they were going to go about, like, the narrative, like, perspective-wise. Because yeah. I thought, oh, well, Patrick, our narrator is dead. 
but it was nice in like ghost yeah. form just like watching him on i thought that was pretty cool and then obviously yeah, achilles goes on a bit of a rampage he starts fighting for for his army again and ends up killing hector yes easy peasy and then i think there was another siege i think they were gonna yeah actually... and he's speared and it is said in the pages that apollo blessed the yeah. arrow the fletch so obviously he was never gonna yeah. miss and then oh but i just liked reading that moment with achilles just like he i think mm. hearing it before yeah. it hit him and he just like accepted it like heartbreaking yeah. but like yeah and then you. also like at that point like yeah he doesn't want to live without patroclus so yeah. he's like okay and like also yeah you're achilles we know how you die <laughs> yeah well at least i did now achilles's relationship right now with patroclus is like you don't know what you have until yeah. it's gone. <laughs> Gives off that vibe. Like, he, yeah, he tried to prolong the prophecy, but no. I also, yeah, if you had just stayed on the mountain, like. <laughs> yeah, mountain together. Just a couple of mountain boys. Yeah. Raise, have a Yeah, farm. you could have lived out your days. But as I said earlier, like, I thought we are going to get a resolution of Helen's situation. Yeah, right, and we don't. <laughs> and I don't know the mythology. I'd like, I don't know what happens after that. <laughs> it's like, give me the next book. Oh, but of course, after Achilles is dead, his son, it's, because it's been a long ass yeah. time now. His son, what it, how do you pronounce his son's name? Oh, it's that, it's like the other one, P Py Pyrus. Pyrus. Py Pyrus or something I feel like, like that. the Y is meant to like be pronounced. Like, you know, you know, like a Py. Yeah. Like Py. Because it's P Pyrus. I'm going to, let me, don't talk for a second. Pyrus, yeah. Pyrus, cool. And obviously there's a, a part of the war because Pyrus has a prophecy himself that he they'll win the war with him and so that is done and but he is eventually killed yeah. as well but he was a little fucking brat yeah because and he didn't want was it him who didn't want his ashes yeah, yeah Patroclus's ashes to be with Achilles yeah it's like you don't even know your yeah. father or these people like such a sanctimonious attitude but I suppose because he was living with Thetis and of course Thetis was going to be feeding him these yeah. sentiments and everything from a young age so that was a bad and idea and again like I guess like Thetis blames Achilles for Patrick Thetis blames Patroclus for Achilles dying because obviously yeah Patroclus dying yeah. leads to Achilles to be yes. dead all right so all right I think we're done like I'm happy to be done with yeah. the plot because it's just war like it's yeah Again, yeah, it was very, it was concise, but also a little bit confusing pacing for me, but I still enjoyed it nonetheless. So I want to talk about first and foremost, um, like obviously like one of the reasons we chose this is because it's like, what's like, I know sapphic is lesbians, what's, I okay, don't know. Cool. the opposite of sapphic, <laughs> um, because it is a <laughs> men love men based book. However, I didn't know my throat's going to go again. Right, so I knew, yeah, going in. That it is like a gay love story um and it's yeah between two men and it's great however i didn't realize that they both took on female lovers as well which is fine and i'm sure that's accurate in the mythology but i feel like in like if you're going to do this really like i would prefer you really lean into it and we just erase like but i guess like you need his son like in the overall plot of the story so like it's a hard it's a hard one yeah, I don't know how I felt about Patroclus sleeping with Di because she was upset that Achilles would not give her attention. Yeah. I thought that was really yeah. weird. And then we're like talking about like their love and like how it goes. Like I've written down like some quotes. Um, yeah, and it's like we reached for each other and I thought of many nights I had lain awake loving him in silence. I would know him in death at the end of the world. I could recognize him by touch alone, by smell. I would know him. I would know him blind by the way his breath came and his feet stuck the earth. And it's like, this is love, and like, how can you just have wives? Like, I don't understand. <laughs> I think in this, in this, in the world, it's like they need like the- Yeah, and they're like a therapon, like their therapon bond, like that goes beyond like love and goes beyond blood. Like they need their heirs and they need their, you know, demigod or god, demigod status bloodlines to run yeah. through. That's all the, like the wives yeah. are there for. But even Ode Odysseus yep. was like, I don't care about that sort of thing because he, they shared a tent and then yeah Odysseus was like made that presumption yeah. and obviously he didn't care about it which is great I suppose in yeah in the grand scheme of things like you have your kingdoms you have your titles and you know you have all your treasure like any sort of like yeah fantasy kingdom related thing as well like it's all that it's about and that's what the wives are for just yeah, to get the children. Yeah, children but yeah I think when Patroclus slept with Di like he didn't say he said that he didn't not enjoy yeah. it so I don't know but obviously yeah as you've the, from the quotes you yeah. just read, like, he loves Achilles. Yes. 
He loves him. And that's so adorable hearing yeah. that back, you know. Because I skipped through it. <laughs> I didn't write any quotes down. I just wrote names, places, and all <laughs> stuff. But yeah, I agree with what you said. Like, yeah, they can have their wives and then can they have... Or then, like, if you could have, like, messed with the timeline a little bit and, like, had it that, like, they slept with these women, like, before they, like, announced their love for each other. Like, Maybe. I don't know. It just, it diminishes yeah, their love know. story for me. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know about that, though. Again, just the yeah, mythology, yeah. I guess. It's weird how you said earlier, like, the mythology be accurate. Like, is mythology even yeah. accurate? <laughs> <laughs> As if it's <laughs> fact. <Yeah. laughs> Again, I wouldn't have minded. His rela- Patrick Klaus's relationship with Brie was, I love that. It sucked how the situation, how it came about, but it, it's great that she managed to, you know, stay friends and loyal to them. And they tried to do everything they can to protect yeah. her. At least Patrick yeah. Klaus did. Achilles almost couldn't give it. Yeah. So. Oh, he, oh, I know what you were talking about when Achilles wanted to, no, he wanted to kill Argue because he was going to let Argue uh, take advantage yeah. of Brie. So that gave Achilles the excuse to yeah. kill him. But then, obviously, Patrick Klaus fucked yeah. up that plan. Yeah, because even I was thinking, like, Achilles, yeah. what are you doing, you asshole? It just shows what an honourable type of person he is. Like, he won't hurt you unless you threaten him or have a reason yeah. against him. Although, I do have a bit of a quarrel. Yes. Are you familiar with the bury your gaze trope? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds fun. <laughs> It, oh, it does not. It oh. is not fun. <laughs> it is a very bad thing in media and stuff, especially in TV shows, especially in recent years, um, when gay and lesbian representation in the media was kind of blossoming yeah. a bit more. A lot of shows would immediately like kill them off after they find happiness uh, with yeah. their partners, or or kill one of them off, type of thing. I was just thinking, does this qualify as part of that trope? Because they both die, but then it's a prophecy and it's mythology. Yeah. Like, and like, where does this? book land in the genres like is it mythology is it like fantasy is it young adult is it like it's a it's a a book talk genre is what it is but yeah i don't know i would say i I think it's described as like a classic so a classic i have like a lot of people that i've spoken to have been like oh i have that book so yeah. I'm gonna read. It's it's probably like an a la Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo type of thing, yeah. which we will, is definitely added to our list. So stay tuned. Miller holds an MA in classics from Brown University, and she taught Latin, Greek, and Shakespeare to high school students. God damn, we yeah. love that. Successful. When was this published? I feel like it's been around a while. First published in Great Britain, 2011. Oh, so it's not really not that long ago. I say, as it's like a 12, it's called 10, a modern 11, 12 classic. years ago. Well, there's your genre yeah. for you. Modern a modern classic. classic. <laughs> but yeah, Bury Your Gaze is not no. a good trope. Uh, it's, it seems to be relaxed a bit now, I think, because not a lot of gay characters are dying because people actually want representation. You know, gay characters. <laughs> Even, like, even more than just, like, the tokenism of it, like, ge- just genuine storytelling yeah. now. But of course, it happens every now and yes. then, and it is not yes. good. I do like that as much as I hate that like they had wives and stuff I do like that it's kind of just like brushed over like in a good way like it's not like made a big deal and then especially like their love story like I know that like there's a little bit of like resistance to it but it's not like blasphemous like you've been cursed by the gods or whatever like it's just like you love dick that's sweet I yeah I agree with that it didn't didn't come across as a big deal and it didn't seem like and even with Brie like she didn't like she didn't coerce not even coerce but like she never like belittled Patrick Klaus for his love for Achilles because yeah. she knew she she knew she he loved he loved him and he could never love her the way yeah. he loves him. And now knowing this came out in two thousand eleven, I'm even more impressed with like just like the simplicity of the way that it was uh, written. Yeah, for sure. Because like I know that like now we've read a couple of books where they're just like different like loves, different like sexualities and stuff, and it's just kind of whatever like a non-issue, which is great because I feel like way back and then even then like that you would have like i feel like authors would have really leaned into that to be like this is a big deal and then yeah like killed one of them Mm, yeah for shock value yeah now there's more like genuine intent whereas it was oh we have a gay character now you know like us but yeah uh did they invent beards (laughs) (laughs) uh because brie was gonna be a beard for patroclus patroclus i think he also i feel like he he genuinely well, didn't love her the way he loved Achilles, but he did have a yeah. love for her and a protection yeah. for her because um, they became best buds. And it was great that she offered him that sort of safety because I think, oh, I don't know, would he have been killed otherwise? I yeah, don't know. I don't know. 
I know, I know Odysseus didn't care, but like, it's not going to stop somebody yeah. else. I completely, 100% agree with what you said. It's very s simplistic, mm -hmm. the way it's written. A lot of the time, there was no... And I also like the um, love-making scenes. I especially like the... really only one... Yeah, well, there was a couple. One scene. Like, well, like, there, like, Patroclus and Achilles, but then, like, other love scenes. Um, oh, but yeah, yeah, like, they're one in chapter 10. They're in the cave. Is that the cave? It's written so well. It's not overly... It's not vulgar. <laughs> It's like say yeah. less. Yeah, less is always more. It's not a fade to black. Never give me a fade to black. I hate fade to blacks. Like, show <laughs> me what's happening. But yeah, it's very much show, not tell. And it's very, yeah, very sensible yeah. the way it was written. Not like super vulgar. Because like, this isn't a smart, yeah. heavy book. So if you're into smart, this is probably yeah. not for you. It's, it's just a nice, lovely little love story. And some, and a lot yeah, of Yeah, if you're interested in a little bit of Greek history. Thrown in, for sure. Ultimately, glad that Thetis, you know, turned her values yes. around almost because Patroclus was like trying to hammer into her make sure we our ashes yeah. are together it, it was, I was probably because it was late at night I was probably a little bit delirious like I wanted to cry yeah. as Patroclus was like revealing all these memories yeah. to her because and it was like it was just so sweet of him to do like he owes her yeah. fuck all like she has been nothing but a yes. bitch to him <laughs> this entire book so but at the end of the day she just wanted to pr yeah. protect her son she loved her son and is it her when she's like he's waiting for you go like in the afterlife yeah. oh! <laughs> beautiful a good little turnaround we love a last yeah. minute character <laughs> development <laughs> but yeah imagine being a mother in that situation as well it's like your son you know he's gonna be the greatest most famous person in all of greece but he's gonna die yeah. young like you'd do everything you can to hold really Patrick Klaus did her yeah. a favor. Like he had many more visits to yeah. her than ever. But of course, being a god, she probably heard all the like Zeus and everybody bitching about not moving yeah. along. Also, my question, yes. real quick, because they say the gods have taken sides. Yes. Blah blah blah. Not exact. Not like taking. It's not like a taking bets thing. But if they know what's going on, why would you need to take a side? Yeah, exactly. And again, <laughs> if like if like the prophecy is gonna. Yeah, be and then that's the thing. Like again, with the prophecies, like if you know it's gonna go this way. Like, why do you need to interfere? Yeah. Again, it's about the journey. Not, it's about the... Well, to them, it's about the <laughs> yeah, destination, it's destination of the journey. <laughs> but yeah, look. Oh, great. Anything else you want to say, Kenzie, on your little list to... Yeah, I just... It was a tough book for me. Yeah, fair enough. I enjoyed it, yeah. It, but it's just, I don't want to read about war. Done! <laughs> <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> um, I wouldn't mind having a crack at Percy Jackson, because... I feel like, yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, and, like, because I feel like this is obviously, like, a standalone book, and, like, it's short. Like, you've got to fit in all that stuff in there. Like, you've got to fit in nine years of war. Whereas, like, Percy Jackson is, like, over several books, so you've got the time to, like, space it out and, like, bleed it yeah. into me. And... and, yeah, I feel like Percy Jackson is a real novice mm. approach to Greek yeah. history. And even though you are following, yeah, Percy himself. I, just quickly, I love in the beginning, like, tension was risen between like Patroclus and Achilles from the get-go with all the like quick glances mm -hmm. and longing glances they had towards each other it was like oh give me yeah <laughs> yeah all, all it's like the soft romance. I, yeah soft, I innocent. love soft romance this is the genre you can describe soft, it, romance. soft romance until <laughs> until it gets yeah to yeah I'm not sure how I yeah I did not like Patroclus yeah. you know sleeping with die but I was interested in reading it, a little bit of a grind, still enjoyed it, but one and done, for sure. No offence to Madeline Miller, but like, yeah, it's just us. Again, we, we, we don't do yeah. Greek history here. <laughs> I wish we did. I wish I had an intense face. I wish I, I, wish I had it in me. <laughs> everything. Alrighty, I suppose if that's yeah. all. Yeah, thanks for listening. Yeah, tune in. We've got a couple of other fun ones coming, so. Sneaky reveal. If you see our TikToks, you'd know. Red, white, and royal blue. They both, they both die at the end. And one last stop. Casey McQuinston. Yes. Same as author of White Red, Royal White Blue. Blue. Good Royal on Blue. her for doing both. Them. I don't know if it's her. Oh, shit. I just assumed her gender. <laughs> Casey's a gender neutral name. <laughs> uh, I know. <laughs> Relax. Okay. Relax. Um, but now, I love the equality between the both because obviously they seem, I know we've had a conversation recently on how we think there's a little bit of inequality in terms of certain representation uh, bubbles mm -hmm. in media, but that's a conversation for, for another, another podcast. We will be going into it. For another podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yes, keep an ear out for those books. They'll yeah. be coming hot throughout yes. Pride Month. 
But obviously, again, we should not only just celebrate Pride Month. We should celebrate Pride all the time. Of course, we'll open ourselves up to like other qu- queer LGBT bu- books in yes. the future. But this is just a starting point, a little stepping yep. stone, and you got to start somewhere. Yes. So, and this, and these just so happen to be the popular books on BookTok. Not saying we're reading popular books on that exclusively from like book talk yeah. and stuff but like we i feel like we have genuine yeah. interest in them yeah. as well i've been i yeah and you know these are popular so i feel like they have to be good yeah yeah exactly yeah and i'm an easy pleaser when it comes to books like i hardly don't finish any like some people might say the certain writing is trash i'm like well i i went along yeah. for the ride i enjoyed it yeah. goodbye That's i'm here it. for the journey not the destination <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly wait a second <laughs> Oh well, thanks for listening and remember to tune in next time. Check us out on Instagram, letterbox underscore book underscore club, TikTok, letterbox book club. So yeah, leave us some discussion points.